Hey guys, so today this is like <clears throat> an impromptu fil filming. Um, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of tour about my department. Okay, so my department is that tall building behind the sea blue kind of building, okay, with the orange um, connection up there. You can literally hear me breathing very hard, right? So it's because I always have to climb mountains to get up to my department. Okay, shoot, someone is in my video. I don't want him to come inside. All right. So I literally have to do this every day and it's so tiring and annoying. Oh, I just wish my school was like on a flat land so that I wouldn't have to suffer to, you know, come to school every day. Oh my God. Oh. Right now I have four classes a week, so I have to come to school probably I think I come to school three times a week. Yes, yes. Okay, so this is... Okay, the phone fell. This is our building. Okay. This part is part of the building. That is one of our biggest lecture halls. All right. I don't know if there are people there right now. Hold on, let me check. Yes, so this is one of our biggest lecture halls in my university. Okay, so it has this slope-like kind of seat. So if you are at the back, you can still see the projection in front over there. Okay, let's go. Okay, so now... We are entering the lobby. This is the lobby of my department, okay? As you can see, I think very soon, some people will be having an exhibition here. So, yes, this is our lobby. So we have two elevators. One is over here. But I used to take that elevator last semester, but this semester, because I moved to a new studio, I use the elevator on this side rather. Okay, so let's get Okay. Okay. It's up there right now, so I have to wait. It's on the seventh floor, so I have to wait for it. Okay. I'll see you soon. So we are in the elevator right now, going to the 8th floor. That is where my studio is. Okay, all right. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, guys, this is my floor. So actually, this building is for art and sports students. So you can literally see kind of a small stadium here for the sports students. Okay, now... Let's go to my department, my studio. So these are lockers. Usually these are used by the undergraduate students. Okay. It's a long line of lockers. All right. Now we are in my studio. Okay. Let's turn on the lights. So the studio is used by um, Contemporary art students and Western painting students. Okay, so this is my student, my studio. So it is used by several students. All right, this is my space. It's a bit scattered. I don't know, but <laughs> I was busy so yesterday, so much yesterday, so I couldn't really organize before going home. Yes, so this is my studio. Let me show you. A very nice view from my studio like when you are here you can literally see 
like who's done, you know? Like very nice view, you know, you see? Like you can literally see the whole campus and even beyond. Okay. So I'm trying to open the window, but it seems this is as far as it can go. So you can see the nice view. So all this is my university. Okay, everything I'm showing you except beyond over there with the water things over there. Okay. And the tall buildings are apartments in this area. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I didn't really plan to make this video, but <clears throat> today is a holiday here, so there aren't so many students in the like the school. It's really empty, just a few students moving around, and so I decided to just give you a little tour of my department. I mean, on the other floors, it's eight floors on this in this building, but in the other floors we have the ceramic stu uh, studios we have the sculpture studios what my department doesn't major in is film okay but we have painting sculpture metal work woodwork um, we also have ceramics and others okay but what we don't do here is film or i think music yes yeah, something like that so uh yeah that is just a little tour i could give you but maybe later when during vacation i can give you like a whole tour of my university actually this is just one campus of my university we have three campuses we have um here is uh Sengha campus and we have the Bumin campus and we have the Gudok campus all right we have three campuses <coughs> but here is the main campus the Bumin campus is for mostly uh international related majors so when you are studying in booming it's you have a high chance of studying in english but in this campus most of the programs are done in korean and so you must uh, imagine how much i'm suffering like every day i do my lectures in korean I do my presentations in Korean and I even have to write my thesis in Korean also. So it's a bit hard, but I mean, if you want something, I think nothing is going to stop you as even if it's so hard, all right? Okay, now I promised to make a video about um, how I got selected for the GKS scholarship uh, in 2022 after I got rejected in 2020 and 2021. So um, let me just give you a brief story. Maybe later I will make like a much more expanded video on how I got a scholarship. Okay, after trying <coughs> three good times. Okay, so in 2020, I think it was around the COVID time, but I already had plans in 2019 that i was going to apply for this scholarship so but i didn't really know how to go about it i didn't know anybody who had won the scholarship that i could ask questions and like just to know how i can go about the scholarship you know that is my main goal for doing these videos for you guys so that at least it can help you uh, familiarize yourself with how to apply for the scholarship and other reasons okay so <clears throat> i didn't really have anybody to ask but i checked on instagram and i found some uh scholars who were probably in their final years or whatever they weren't african students some of them were from philippines and other places so i contacted one guy and i was like oh like i would like to apply for the scholarship and i would really appreciate it if you could answer my questions <coughs> And this guy told me that, he told me that he can only answer two questions. Yes, only two questions. So I should choose my, my questions very carefully and ask him. Yes. So I simply asked him about the um, how to authenticate my document and basically like the process. 
and he just gave me some straightforward answers and I was like okay I'll just take it like that so I had to immerse myself in reading the guidelines over and over and over again to be able to understand how to go about it and so I also went to YouTube to look for videos also explaining the scholarship how to write a personal statement SOP blah 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 <clears throat> I did all that and so I started writing my personal statement and statement of purpose, which I felt was very, very crucial in this scholarship application. And so I wrote it, I went to Google, I looked for sample um, personal statements and SOPs, and I made my own personal statements and SOPs. I knew that I had to put together a portfolio and I was now, having to decide between the embassy track or the university track. So I ultimately decided to go with the university track. And so I just had to go through the, what do you call it? The universities to see which one I would like best. And so like SNU caught my eye, you know, SNU, oh, SNU is a very big university in Korea is number one. I was like, oh yeah, I have a high GPA, blah, 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 I have achievements, so why not just go with SNU? <clears throat> and I think that was the very biggest mistake I made when I applied the first time. So um, I applied and in February, the documents came out. And around that time, you didn't even have to authenticate your um, degree certificate or your transcript or your birth certificate. At that time, you could just submit it like that. <clears throat> And so I sent my application documents to SNU and I was there and I received an email from them saying that I didn't submit my an original copy of my birth certificate because uh, they, they, SNU was requiring um, a submission of a family relation document, but other universities, it was just, it was okay to just submit uh, your citizenship ID and your parents own okay so they said the birth said that I sent was not authenticated was not an authenticated copy or an original so I have up to this day I have to send my original birth set and I was like my god and I was working very far from where I could go and post the documents like I literally have to take a bus for like three to four hours to get to this place and post. And posting from Ghana to Korea cost me so much money. But I mean, I wanted it, so I had to do the document and post it back to them, and I did. Now, it was time to wait for the interview, whatever, whatever. I sat there and sat there and sat there, and I wasn't hearing from them. Then I think it was April, April something, I don't remember, I think it was April 8th. Yes, I was then I received an email that I wasn't selected for the scholarship. And guys, it really broke my heart. I mean, I cried, I cried on that day. Yes, because I really, really, really wanted the scholarship, you know. And so I, well, I didn't give up. I told my professor who I was his teaching assistant at that time and he was like I shouldn't worry I mean I can try again next year and he even offered to let me work as his personal assistant until like I am able to apply and get the scholarship and he would pay me out of his own pocket God bless that man. He really, really helped me. And he mentored me for the three years that I worked for him before getting the scholarship to come here. And so the following year, I decided to go with the embassy track. So before the time came, I was already preparing my documents. I made my personal statement and statement of purpose better, like I upgraded it. I wrote it better, I made people proofread and everything. And within that one year, whatever achievement I had gotten, like more to do with my artwork, I upgraded my portfolio, I had written a book, which I published also. I added all of those things and I sent my documents to the embassy. Guys, 
and i was there waiting for the embassy also to call me for an interview like i think i sent it and three weeks later i wasn't hearing from them so i called them to ask them like when are they going to do the M embassy interviews and they were like oh we've already done the interviews and selected the students that we want and i was like what so if you've done that why not send those who didn't pass the an email to i mean alert them so that was break hard uh, hard break number two but that day i didn't cry i mean i had already gone through that emotion so i was like okay okay i'll try again i'm never ever going to give up yes i will try again and so my professor at that time told me why not also try for um, universities in america I mean, don't just put your all your eggs in one basket. And I said, okay, I'll think about it. So that year, a friend of mine also asked me to apply to uh, Kent State University and Illinois State University. I mean, you can also get a teaching assistant scholarship over there. So I said, okay, then I will just apply for those two universities in November. And then next year, the following year, 2022, I will apply for the Korean scholarship again. So whichever one I get, I'm gonna go so in november i applied for the kent state and illinois state university and february 2022 i applied for the korean scholarship again but through um the university track to donga university and in 2021 i think around in september i sent an email to donga university to kumin university and to ey university and i was like the email that sounds the warmest is where I will send my application to and the coordinator for Donga University was so nice like he gave me even brochures and so many things to like familiarize myself with the school and the application and everything so I was like okay then I think I'm going to go with Donga University even though it's in the Thai B schools I'm fine with it I mean it's the number two highest university in Busan so I was like, okay, I'm going to go with Donga University. And in the following year, I applied to Donga University. My personal statement, because I was applying for Kent State and Illinois State, my personal statement, I made it much, much, much better. And I had upgraded my portfolio also because every year I work, I'm an artist, so every time I work. And I had much, much better artworks that I could use for my portfolio. And I even contacted... Um, the coordinator that how should I even present my portfolio and he referred me to the arts department teaching assistant and they showed me how I should present my portfolio for the um, application document screen. So I did all of that and I sent my documents to Donga. Guys, I don't even want to go to, through how like I suffered to put together my application and post. It was really hectic and I spent a lot, lot of money to do that but i mean i ultimately knew what i wanted so i wasn't even thinking of all the stress that i had to go through so i did the posting and i was there i mean donga university is always late with applications their application deadline is always around 4th or 5th april so i was there for like three weeks i wasn't hearing anything so i sent them an email and the coordinator was like oh our deadline is on 4th april so like be patient we are going to call you very soon so in april i had an interview with um kent state university as well so i think it was around 24th april i had my interview with kent state and everything went well i got the um admission but they told me that the scholarship was given to another person so if i could wait for the following year that is 2023 the admission they'll put it on hold and then add the scholarship to it the following year and i was like okay but i knew that i was still waiting for Donga university so on the next day i think 26th april or something i was just there all of a sudden it was like 6 a.m in ghana but it was like I don't know the time it was like probably 3 p.m here in korea i was just there and i received a call from from busan blah 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 number and i was like okay let me just pick it up i picked it up and they were like oh this is donga university we would like to do an interview with you today like impromptu my god 
So the good thing is that I had done an interview with Kent State University and so I had my answers prepared in my head. So they asked me the questions, tell us about yourself, when you come to Korea, how are you going to deal with the weather, all of some of the questions that I stated in my interview video. And I answered these questions and they were so happy. They said, oh, um, you did very well. Uh, expect an email from us tomorrow. And then the following day, I got the good news that I was one of the lucky applicants, selected applicants for the scholarship in Donga University. But they are going to send my documents to NID, which is also another stress so now i have conquered one obstacle so i was really really happy and now i just had to pray that i get um the approval from nid as well so i had to wait 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 from april imagine until june until nid released their final applicants list guys like they were going to re release it on 25th june so on 25th June, I, like, I didn't sleep. I was just there waiting, waiting, waiting. Around 2 a.m. I felt sleepy, so like I just slept. And then around 4 a.m., I had a friend who texted me and told me, yeah, like you were selected. I woke up, my God, like I just went straight to the website and I opened and my name was there. Guys, imagine like, the rush of emotions inside me. I didn't know if I should cry, if I should laugh. I was extremely happy that day. And so the next day I rushed to my university and I told my professor, yeah, yeah I got the scholarship, blah, blah, blah. They were all so happy. And so now I just had to wait for an invitation letter for my visa, blah, blah, blah. All those things came and we finally went to the Korean embassy to get our visa and I just had to start packing, <laughs> packing to leave Ghana. You know, I was extremely happy. I couldn't wait, really. And so in, um, I guess, well, I think I left Ghana in 20, on 24th August and I came with another friend. Yes, the two of us we're going to the same language university. So we chose the same date and I came with him. So we landed in Korea on 26th, I guess, and we started a language school, which is another story of on its own. So I think probably I will tell you about that story later. But today the story was just about how I was able to get the scholarship after I was rejected twice. Okay, so all I want to say is, um, if you were rejected this year, it doesn't mean that you, uh, your application wasn't good. It just means that someone's own was just better than yours. So just don't give up, continue to be determined and persevere and just make your application better for the following year, okay? Whatever reasons that caused you to not get this scholarship they don't matter you just have to um, get yourself up and try again okay so that's all that i'm going to leave you with and yeah that's all that i can say today so just don't give up okay chase your dreams all right continue to chase your dreams and you will get there one day all right guys so i think i'm just gonna leave the video here today before you go don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like and share the video okay all right i love you guys all right see you later and if you have anything that you want to talk about leave it in the comment section if you have any questions leave it in the comment section okay guys all right have a nice day wherever you are bye bye